30 minutes in and we are already well on our way tonight. Hey, it's Angela Griffin. And if you would like to say hello tonight, you can text me on 88291. You can WhatsApp, that is 08000 288 Or you can email me on unwinds at bbc.co.uk. I've got a real eclectic mix of songs to play, all to get you nice and relaxed. There's some classic Destiny's Child, some timeless ELO, and a track from the White Stripes, and it is not a punky shouty one. Jack got out his acoustic guitar this time instead. That is all still to come on Unwinds, here on Radio 2. BBC News at 10 o'clock. This is Nikki Cardwell. One of the largest gatherings of global statesmen and women for decades has been taking place at Buckingham Palace ahead of tomorrow's funeral for Queen Elizabeth II. Her son, King Charles, hosted the reception. The US president was among the hundreds of world leaders and dignitaries who attended. Earlier, he'd visited Westminster Hall to see the Queen lying in state. As he signed a book of condolence at Lancaster House, he gave this tribute. She was the same... Uh, in person as she as her image decent honorable and all about service and uh, our hearts go out to the royal family to king charles and all the family it's a loss that leaves a giant hole so to all the people of england all the people of the united kingdom our hearts go out to you and uh, you were fortunate to have had her for 70 years we all were the world's better for her The ruler of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, is no longer expected to attend tomorrow's funeral. Human rights groups had criticised the decision to invite him. He denies accusations that he ordered the murder of the journalist Kamal Jashogji. The queue to see Queen Elizabeth lying in state has shortened significantly in the past few hours after mourners were advised not to travel to join the line. The beginning of the queue is between Tower Bridge and London Bridge, more than a mile closer to Westminster Hall than the original starting point of Southwark Park. Lucy, who's been in the line for 12 hours, says this is her second time around. That five minutes was so special and it's almost not enough time to take it all in that I thought, well, you know, I'll go through it again. (laughs) It'll be worth it. For me, it's kind of restored my faith in humanity quite a bit because you just see all of these people who are coming together. You may come from different backgrounds, but we've all just got one thing in common today. The authorities in Japan have urged millions of people to head for emergency shelters as Typhoon Nanmadol moves across the southern island of Kyushu. The storm is bringing torrential rain and high winds of almost 150 miles per hour. Officials in Leicester say residents can expect to see a significant police presence in the coming days after hundreds of men from the city's Hindu and Muslim communities were involved in violent disorder last night. Police and community leaders have called for calm. The Chief Constable of Leicestershire Police, Rob Nixon, says a number of his officers were injured. My officers did a tremendous job when significantly outnumbered. Uh, And of course I've got the job today uh, in between things of contacting the 16 officers who were injured as a consequence of yesterday's uh, outrageous disorder. And a Palestinian farmer has discovered an ornate Byzantine floor mosaic depicting colourful animals and birds while trying to plant an olive tree on his land in the Gaza Strip. The relic is thought to be around 1,500 years old. And the weather, it'll be a mainly dry night for most parts with a few isolated showers. BBC News, it's three minutes past ten.